Big Way struggles at 67,000 Ethereum in the spotlight. New record for meme coin profits. Big Way's push towards 67,000 is blocked the market recovery or lack of momentum. Ethereum takes center stage this week, bearish or bullish, depends entirely on the US SEC. If we are in the middle of a bull market now, what price level will Bitcoin reach when it makes a new high in April next year? Whale's masterful move again, Idol makes a 993 time gain in 8 hours, stunning the market. The US wants to dethrone USDT, is there any breathing room left for the EU's Mika bill? With the EU's Mika bill about to take effect, will crack and follow OKX in delisting USDT. Venezuela bans crypto mining, power crisis exacerbated. From mining haven to ban storm, crypto mining becomes a new target for corruption. Reimagine the world with cryptocurrencies, master 24 hour wealth code. Let's get rich slowly together. Monday, May 20th, so here is Bitcoin TV's channel, the highest blockchain industry. I'm Zhu. Let's first look at the 24 hour cryptocurrencies headline sponsored by Bitcoin. Over the weekend, Bitcoin fluctuated narrowly around 67,000 for two days. Last night, it touched a high of 67,750. But selling pressure emerged afterwards. Early this morning, around 3 a.m., it dipped to a low of 65,839. As noon, Bitcoin has stabilized above 66,000, down 0.83% in the past 24 hours. Ethereum saw larger swings over the weekend, peaking at 3146 but dipping to a low of 3053. This morning, down 1.69% in the past 24 hours. In terms of news, everyone should pay attention that by US Eastern Time on May 23rd, the SEC must make a final approval or rejection decision on at least one Ethereum spot ETF application. If approved, it could drive Ethereum's price up, similar to the Bitcoin spot ETF situation. However, the chances of approval are not high. According to current data, the total asset on the management of US Bitcoin ETFs has reached 53.967 billion. Among them, GPTC is almost 19.373 billion, ranking first. IBIT ranks second with an arm of 17 billion. FBTC ranks third with an arm of 9.9 .9 billion. In the past week, US spot Bitcoin ETFs had a net inflow of 948.3 million, with a daily average net inflow of 189 million boosted by the stock market rally. Bitcoin spot ETFs saw a significant inflow of funds, although trading volume did not increase much. The net inflow of funds did provide a significant boost. Shorter market sentiment has warmed up slightly, and there are still expectations for the Ethereum spot ETFs news on May 23rd. Last week, exchanges saw significant net token outflows as nearly 1 billion in funds flowed into spot ETFs, so these tokens must have been withdrawn from exchanges for a settlement. You can clearly see that as the price rebounded, the net outflow phenomenon on exchanges contracted significantly and basically maintained a balanced level. The short-term positive impact has temporarily subsided, and the market now needs to wait for new news to stimulate it. For the cryptocurrency market itself, there is still no self-driven wealth effect or internal demand, so it will remain in an observation phase following the macro environment and news. The Bitcoin halving event has traditionally been seen as a key driver of bull market cycles. Historical data shows that in two years heading up to each halving, the market is typically dominated by bearish forces. However, ahead of this year's fourth halving event, the situation has reversed. Shockingly, Bitcoin hit a new all-time high of nearly 74,000 in March this year. Months before the halving event, the first time a new high has been reached pre-halving. This remarkable rally was mainly fueled by the market frenzy triggered by the launch of the US Bitcoin spot ETF. Since mid last year, there has been optimism about approval of the first Bitcoin spot ETFs, sparking strong interest in Bitcoin and driving its gradual price rise. After indeed gaining SEC approval to list in early January this year, it became the driving force behind Bitcoin breaking its all-time high. In the initial weeks after Bitcoin spot ETF listing, fund inflow surged, although demand has cooled in recent weeks. Bitcoin's price remains in the $60,000 to $70,000 range. So many people are now wondering what the situation is and whether we can continue to hold on. I keep being bullish, but you won't listen. So let's hear what others have to say. Ki Young Ju, CEO of CryptoQuant, recently wrote that Bitcoin is currently in the midterm of a bull market cycle. He pointed out that the actual market value of Bitcoin is growing faster than its realized market value, a trend that typically lasts around two years. If this pattern continues, the bull market cycle could end in April 2025. Anonymous analyst Plam shares the same view as Ki Young Ju, believing that there will still be a halving market this time. 
He previously stated that Bitcoin's rise will be triggered again by the halving with Bitcoin surpassing $100,000 in 2024 and reaching a peak of over $300,000 in 2025. Now that the price has returned to the 66,000 level and started fluctuating, one of the market's main focuses this week is the SEC's approval decision on the Ethereum spot ETF. That X application will face the final approval deadline on May 23rd. If the Ethereum spot ETF is approved, it could emulate a successful case of the Bitcoin spot ETF and further boost the market sentiment for Ethereum. However, many experts remain cautious, believing the chances of approval are low. This uncertainty could bring some volatility to the market. Additionally, the Federal Reserve will release the minutes from its May policy meeting this week, which could shed light on the future direction of interest rate policy. NVIDIA's earnings report will also be released this week, and if the data is optimistic, it could further drive up the stock price and boost activity in the broader AI sector. The meme coin bomb issued by PP meme artist Dark Farm previously created a meme coin legend launched in March. It raised over 10,000 so in just two days and listed on Binance within three days of its launch. A remarkable feat. At its peak, bomb surging nearly 460 times with a market cap exceeding 2 billion. The mysterious address SundayFunday.so gained attention with sharp eyes as it was the biggest participant in bomb's pre sale. Investing 421 so to acquire 14.3 billion bomb tokens worth 40 million at the peak. Sunday funded also later sold 5.3 trillion bomb, receiving 38,305 so worth about 766,000, and still holds 8.94 trillion bomb, remaining the largest individual holder. His recent exploit has topped the charts again. According to market monitoring data, SundayFunday.Sol today invested 13 Sol, equivalent to $2,275, to purchase a total of 242 million meme coins one dole. Incredibly, these initially inconspicuous digital assets soared rapidly within just eight hours, eventually realizing a value of $2.26 million, achieving an astonishing 993-fold return. At the same time, savvy investor Dai98S exchanged 20 Sol for 35.79 million won dull. One hour later, they began selling 21.9 million won dull, making a profit of approximately $118,000. In the crypto world, get rich quick stories are no longer rare, but cases where someone makes a 993 time gain in just 8 hours by simply buying a meme coin idle are few and far between. This astonishing surge has refreshed the profit record in the cryptocurrency market and once again demonstrated enormous potential and limitless possibilities of meme coins. According to data from Dex Greener, one doe surged 12,572% within 24 hours on its launch but has also experienced crashes. Currently, one dose liquidity is only 382,000, so there is still room for further upside. This also reminds us that timing is crucial in the cryptocurrency market. But if Sunday founded also or DY98S, their actions have proven this point. In the crypto world, profits are often generated in the blink of an eye when you make the right move. In 2020, public skepticism towards USDT reached its peak, even causing a crash. But in that same day, nearly 100 new stablecoin players enthusiastically entered the arena, including several regulators approved the stablecoins. The industry had clearly become a new hot market in the blockchain space. At the time, these new entrants and exchanges were jointly launching an offensive against USDT, aiming to dethrone it as king. But no matter how hard they tried, USDT achieved a remarkable success. In the first quarter of this year, Tether USDT's issuer achieved a record net profit of $452 million, with around $1 billion coming from net operating profits from holding U.S. treasuries. Tether's U.S. treasuries holdings now exceed Germany's ranking 153rd globally by asset value. While the winds seem to have claimed in the U.S., a storm is now brewing in Europe. Think about 2020. Imagine a room full of people. And the, the people in, in this room are all the greatest names of our industry. And, um, you know, you can imagine in that room, all the people, you know, were looking at each other and then looking at us and, you know, whispering, oh, yeah, yeah, it, that, that, those guys are, are the black sheep. Those guys are, they, they are going down. And then you fast forward four years in that room, you don't hear whispering because basically there is only us. The EU crypto legislation MICA stipulates that only EMAS and credit institutions can issue stablecoins. 
This law is set to take effect by the end of this year, with stablecoin regulations expected to be enforced by June. Cryptocurrency exchange OKX has already ceased support for most trading pairs involving USDT in March. Following this news, Marcus Hughes, global head of regulatory affairs at Kraken, denied any delisting plans on the X platform. According to CoinMarketCap data, USDT's total supply is 114 billion, accounting for 69% of the total stablecoin market cap, which is 6.8 billion, while the second largest USDC has 35.3 billion, accounting for 21%. However, with the EU clearly legislating and implementing regulations, the Compliance Focus Circle, which already obtained a conditional DASP registration from France AMF last September and subsequently applied for an EMI license, seems to have a lead. It looks like the number two is about to challenge the number one for the throne. Will USDC be able to seize this opportunity to dethrone USDT? As the country with the world's largest proven oil reserve, Venezuela's economy is heavily dependent on oil. However, since the international oil price crash in 2014, Venezuela's international balance of payments has deteriorated. In 2018, Venezuela's fiat currency, the Bolivar, plummeted with 2,300 bolivars needed to buy a cup of coffee a decade ago, but 20 million bolivars required to, for an egg in 2018. Currency devaluation and falling oil production compounded Venezuela's economic woes. At that time, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies became a lifeline for Venezuelans, with many starting to mine Bitcoin. Under President Maduro's regulation, local electricity subsidies were extremely high, essentially allowing free electricity use, making Venezuela the country with the cheapest electricity rates in world. However, just a few days ago, the Venezuelan government made a 180-degree turn in its attitude towards Bitcoin mining. What happened? Venezuela国家加密货币协会在社交媒体平台X上发布的一则帖子明确指出，委内瑞拉已对加密货币挖矿活动实施了禁令。此次举措是对近期一系列打击行动的延续，作为反腐败工作的一部分。委内瑞拉在马拉开市查封了共计两千台加密货币挖矿设备，电力不强调，需要通过减轻这些高能耗挖矿场给电网带来的压力，来提供更为高效且稳定的电力服务。据官方人士透露，在过去十年中，委内